Uh, you are watching the number one podcast in the whole wrestling community. I'm one of your hosts, Juan. And I'm your other host, John Paul Leck. And together we are... Rogue How's every single one of you today? Hope that, like, we're, all, we're still in prison. Yeah, we're all, we're talking all... We're still, all we're all still in, we're still in, we're still in lockdown yeah we're still in lockdown and in spirit of that guys we like always every every weekend we try to do something that is like unusual and different from the regular stuff that we present throughout the week in the channel so jean paul and i were talking is like what should, what should we do let's like let's do something out of the blue something legit it's like hey we, we we said something in the in the spirit of the smackdown review that is in the channel, by the way. We said, how do we do like a pay-per-view that from another company, something different? So we decided to do Lockdown from 2009. It's like when TNA, total non-stop wrestling was legit. Well, total, total non-stop, non-stop action. action. action yeah. Total it, non-stop it, it, action, legit. And that's one thing, like, you know, we're both fans of old school TNA. I mean, Impact, nowadays, they do like... Some things okay, uh, but I mean, back then, like the 2008 9, you know, we had Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, all them guys, super legit. And this was just like a fun pay per view. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to do something fun because, like we said, WWE, like, look at the shit that they give us. We're like, we don't want that. So we're like, let's go back to the past when things, you know, were presented le- in a legit, fun way. And that's what the show was. It was just a fun show. And yeah, and that's right before the days of TNA when TNA was actually breaking ground. They were like promoting really like stars that like right now they're like WWE superstars or they're mm-hmm. stars that like in other promotions like New Japan, like they were molding these people yeah. from like the future. And now, like I said, WWE has the majority of these names. Mm-hmm. So, and then basically, basically what you just said is like, hey, like Impact or TNA was good was actually a promotion that when it came to quality they were putting sometimes even better product than what yeah, yeah, you WWE gotta say was like good. yeah it was almost one of those things like Jeff Jarrett like he like he walked and fell and tripped so Cody Rhodes could run. You know what I mean? Like he tried to do this and it's like you know he failed because there were some aspects he let too many different people come in. And this and that, like Vince Russo eventually came in to try to help. He brought in Hogan, Bischoff, all of them tried to help. And then we saw, you know, it kind of went one step forward, 10 steps back. And then now they're building themselves up even till this day still. But like, and then Cody Rhodes doing the same thing with AEW. But obviously, you know, they're off to a more successful start, I would say. But, you know, great stuff, though, from like these days of TNA, I feel. Oh, yeah, and it's nice to always go back to the past, like you said, and always uh, just relieve things like this, that they were fun. We had a really good time watching this. I enjoyed myself. Like you said, it's like you go buy a beer, some pizza. You know, well, the beer you had to, like, take, like boy, you know, buy it, like, a few days ago because we're in prison. We're inmates, mm-hmm. so that's what we're trying to do. But, like, let's just start with a review, like usual. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe. Ring the bell for all notifications. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. Thank you for the opportunity. And of course, a much well-deserved thank you for the ones that have been there with us from the beginning. Thank Mm -hmm. you so very much. And Jean-Paul, this pay-per-view took place in April 19, 2009 from the Liakura Center. And it used to be the Temple Temple Center. And the main event, well, we're going to talk about that. It it features like Sting going against Mick Foley. And, And that's the one thing you're like, no. Foley's not here. It's not Foley. He's gone. It's Cactus Jack. That's right. Like the one. Like I don't understand how you know WWE is like this big juggernaut powerhouse, and when they present stuff from their commentary team, even like some of their video packages. Yeah, some of them are are good, and I always say they they do them really good. But just watching TNA and all these video packages for like this match, it's like especially the main event. And, you know, the Team Angle versus, was it Team Star or Team Jarrett? Team Jarrett uh, like, against the main event Mafia. Yeah, yeah. That, that, the video packages and everything building for those matches rivals what WWE does today. And you have the announced team. They really get into it. They really sell it. And you have Michael Cole and Corey Graves or, you know, Tom Phillips and the King and Byron Saxon. To me, those guys combined aren't half as good 
as, you know, one of these guys on the announce team for TNA. Yeah, uh, was Mike Tanae and Don West, yes. Yeah, like, like all the six or all four, five of those guys combined, you know, don't even have as much charisma as one of these guys doing their little toe. Oh, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, when they do moves and all this stuff happens, like, oh, I really like this guy. Like, he's my favorite to win. And there's all this stuff. And they really get into it. And the WWE guys are like, oh, please make sure that you um, uh, go to WWEshop.com. We have a 20% off code. And it's like, dude, can you talk about the match? Can you act like you're excited? Can you act like you enjoy what you do? That's, that's, well, see, that's, that's a what, big statement just, that's, right there, Mr. Egg. That's a big statement. Act like, like you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, That's you the problem. Be, you, well, you, first of all, you shouldn't even have to act like you enjoy. You should be enjoying what you're doing. I would love to have that job. Yeah. I mean, maybe not calling the current product of WWE, but I would love to be an announcer. Call yeah. moves. You know, that's what I, they act like they're so dead, which, I mean, maybe they are. I, like I said, I wouldn't blame them for being dead, for having to call what they do, but, like, hey, I don't know. It, it will be. Go, yeah, leave, go, leave, go leave and go work for AEW then. Oh, work, work on Impact. <laughs> we're like a, right now, Impact has Josh Matthews and Don Callis. Uh -huh. I will tell you, I've seen a lot of episodes, you know. I like to just, like, out of, out of 2011, I got into it to watch me even more, you know, as a regular basis and everything. I enjoy what I watch, but of course, it was like Hogan was already there, so it was getting, it was getting it crap. Was done. It was already poison, you know. It was already, mm -hmm. like, yeah, the disease was already spread out. Uh, but, yeah, some moments were cool. And um, and now is like like you said. There, imagine this. Like ten years almost after, mm -hmm. like they're just starting to you know rebirth, like redesign nice. themselves, yeah, like, getting like a name for themselves once again. And you know Tessa and Tessa Blanchard as the champion, Taya Barclay. You know the the tag team champions are really good. Josh Alexander is pretty legit. Daga, they have like a lot of big night. Rob Van Dam is still there. Brian mm -hmm. Cage was there, so. They took su such a long time for them to reveal because, like you said, they let themselves have people that give them bad advice. Yeah, and they, yeah. Way. I mean, and then Dixie Carter took over, and what does she know about wrestling? Yeah, I mean, she's she yeah, getting help I mean, out because she surrounded herself with people mm -hmm. that did not know a lot of the business. Or, I mean, did not know how to make business profitable. Exactly. One of them, who you know, mm -hmm. one, of, and we're not we're not hating on Hogan. Hey, wow. I will always say this, and we've said this many times throughout the podcast. We, uh, he's the guy that made wrestling popular. Do we? I, do I consider him the best of all time? Absolutely not. So, do I on. consider he, him one of the worst of all time? Absolutely yes, and that's me. And and that's Jean Paul. And then when it comes to me, if you ask me, Hulk Hogan, I love Thunder Lips from Rocky Three. There you go. That's that's my best part of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> that's the extent of it. Is that match with Sylvester Stallone? That, mm -hmm. That's all I can say about it. So, Mr. Leck, first match of the night is the escape match for the TNA X Division Championship. Here are the names right here Suicide. Legit. And we're not, like you said, Suicide. We love it, yeah. but we love yeah. the wrestler. Okay? Yeah, yeah. We said Suicide is, it's, he, the wrestler is legit. The other definition, no, please don't. That's you know. not legit. Yes. Yeah. That's not legit. But but like because you know people now if you don't know by now I love masks I love like gimmicks like all that especially when it's a gimmick that can wrestle like if you come out as the gobbledygooker and you're bullshit and you can't wrestle get out of here but if you come out wearing a costume or something and you're legit I'll pop and that's what I love you know the mask is like the full body suit and like it, it is he was legit oh yeah yeah and pretty, and there's pretty, some other you know. And there were some other familiar names in there, too. Yes. A, a guy go, that goes by the name of Consequence Creed. Who? 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 Consequence who? Who? Creed. Yeah. Consequence Creed, like for the ones that don't know, uh, WWE guy, he excels the power positivity. positivity. Mm -hmm. He promotes the power positivity. Xavier Woods. In his first you know, incarnation as a professional wrestler, TNA had him. So that's Consequence Creed. And we have Kai Kiyoshi. And then we have also Jay Lethal as Black Machismo. Legit guy. Pretty mm -hmm. underrated. Never made the move to WWE. We were talking before we started recording. I, I don't know why. I never know what, what happened with AJ Lethal. But he was he's a, he's a good wrestler. And he was able to pull out like gimmicks like this, imitating others. We saw the thing with Ric Flair. When mm -hmm. they go, woo, 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 and all of that. So I'm, I never know what happened with him. Mm -hmm. And my, we have the Sheik Abdul Bashir. That happens to be Daivari. Uh, Daivari, for the ones that you know, he was also um, the lackey of Mohammed Hassan, and then he managed Kurt Angle in 2006. He did a lot of things with the WWE. 
So they're fighting for the X Division Championship. That's a division that was groundbreaking at that time. And oh, you yeah. probably enjoy that match as much as I did because mm-hmm. it was all like kind of like cruiserweights and like they always gave you like the first like legit match of the night. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like you got to start off the show hot. Like it don't matter what promotion, what you're doing. You want to get the crowd into it. You don't want to start off slow. You want to put one of your bigger matches to open the show. And that's what they did here. There was a lot on this show. So no match really was that long. They were all kind of quick. You know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. But, you know, this was a good, fun match. And like you said, you know, it was, there was a lot, there was a lot of names from WWE. And it's cool to see where these guys began. And, you know, it, the X Division, it was great. Guys like AJ Styles are in there. But, you know, this thing was really cool. And it was cool to see, you know, Suicide win. Like I said, I'm no, I don't know really any of the storylines or anything that was going on besides what they explained. But, you know, just really fun match, you know, moves off the, like off the cage and everything, and, top, and the dive, the the cage, dive at the end, yeah. From the top of the cage, yeah. yeah. He had a really good spot like that. Black Machismo doing the whole Macho Man Randy Savage stick. He did uh, like the, the elbow and all of yeah. that. And like you said, him and Xavier Woods are consequence creed in this. <laughs> for, for the time being, like they were a tag team, right? Yeah. They were, con- the lethal they were called the lethal consequence. I, yeah. You know, like, even like, you see, it does make total sense, you know, how like... Out of the both names, boom, little consequence. Hey, legit. And then you understand why they become a tag team. And like Jean Paul was saying, the match didn't last too long. 11 minutes and 37 seconds, but yeah, and filled with power and action. Yeah, and there was two tag teams. Like I said, lethal consequence and then the Sheik. Um, and who was the other guy? It was Suicide and then... Kiyoshi. Yeah, he was uh, partners with the Sheik. So then, they, like I said, there was two tag teams in there. But Kiyoshi, was, he was gone. Like, he got eliminated real quick. And then, you know, Creed, and then, like, they kind of got eliminated. I thought it was going to come down to Jay Lethal. I thought yeah. he, he, I thought, looked the best in the whole match. Yeah. And then he got taken out, and then it was the Sheik and um, Suicide. And then, like I said, it, his partner came out, tried to screw with him. Everybody was there, all the security and stuff. And as soon as they all tangled up, and suicide you, you know. was climbing to the top. Again, they, I was like, you know, you know what you it's know. going to do. Uh, you've seen this in you know, every single promotion. is like, okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing that I, is, I see that in every kind of steel cage match like this, some guy will eat like a finisher, and he'll be laying there. And as soon as the other guy starts climbing the cage, it's like he eats his sensu bean from Dragon Ball Z. He's right back up, and he goes to catch him or, before or, they get Or it's like, like you hit a comeback in the yeah. game. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, what? Like... But then, but then, you know, when it's not a steel cage match, you lay there for like 10 minutes and you can't move. Yeah. <laughs> it's those one of the things that, you know, as you always like, you keep watching wrestling, you see, you notice different yeah. patterns, you notice different things. That, I like, like when I, I, I'll just call him Davari, screw it. When Davari, when he hit the freaking, uh, he hits like a DDT, like kind of like on his knees or something. And they call it like the weapon of mass destruction DDT. I'm like, what is the, you can tell like this is. That, there's no way they would be able to use that today. Oh, no. No, yeah, you, see, you, like, you see how, like, in 10 years, 11 years, so, yeah. you know, how, how, like, times have changed. How mm. society, I don't know. See, and I'm, I was going to be a powerful statement here. I don't know if it improved for the best or went backwards. But the fact that you're not able to yeah, use I would say, yeah, like that. Yeah, without getting into it, the only thing I'm going to say is, to me, it's six and one, half a dozen in the other. Some things... We could afford to go back to the go- to the good old days, so to speak, and then some things have improved for the better. It's you know, it's six. Like I said, it, it's a little bit of both. It is good, yeah, but like you said, like good stuff, and then uh, suicide retains. Mm-hmm. Suicide ends up retaining. He was legit, you know. He was like pretty legit, like and see, like there were many wrestlers also that they used to incarnate suicide. One of them being uh, somebody that you also know, TJP. TJP oh, okay. was one of the suicides. Yeah, he okay. was. He was one of them, like a few, like you had to be like, you know, cruiser way like that. And then you put the mask on, but like it was through the years. Suicide kept changing guys, but one so of them was TJP. Kind of like a, like a tiger mask or like a Sin Cara. It's just, it's different guys. You like, you yeah, play but, the but game. But, but at least Suicide, you know, somebody legit. And also yeah. well, like, like black, uh, like tiger mask, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. Like yeah. legit, but like not like Unico or like yeah. not like Dong the Clown and things like that. But next match, Mr. Egg, ODB. Remember last time we talked about ODB was at the beginning of the at the yep at the beginning of the year when we did a um, hard to kill impact so because you had a championship match with Jordan Grace and Taya Barkley 
well, he is also, she's wrestling. She goes against Daphne. Daphne was really popular back in the day. Mr. Egg, imagine that. Daphne is the first girl that kind of had the pages gimmick. Yeah. You know, emo, dark, yeah. dark hair, and like pale. Scream, and she even screamed a lot too, like Paige and stuff in this match at least. Yeah. He, he, don't call me on, don't quote me on it, but hey, you could see maybe like like Jean Paul like has his like conspiracy theories mm -hmm. about Shane Douglas and Triple H. I could yes. uh, I could be like, hey, maybe Paige with Daphne right mm -hmm. here because see, Daphne was very popular. She dated even Phil Brooks, CM Punk. Oh, she, yeah, she was. Oh, I'm, I'm sure Paige, when she was young, you know, I'm sure she watched everything. WWE, Impact, I'm sure she watched all of it. Especially because her parents were in the business. So, you know, she was going to be paying attention to everything. So, yeah, she probably saw them and was like, hey, you know, that's kind of stuff I like. You know, I'm white as a ghost. You know, hey, why not? Let me imitate it. It works because, like you said, she was popular. Why wouldn't you want to imitate someone who was popular? Legit. Exactly. And then, of course... Somebody that is still fighting up to this day, also Madison Rain. Mm -hmm. Madison Rain, like uh, you know, developing her character because after that she will go through many transformations to the point that she became like a knockouts champion for a few times. She won that championship a few times, and they're fighting to be the queen of the cage match. Yeah, and I think they kind of said this was maybe setting up like a a number one contender kind of yes. then to fight, you know, the whoever won the championship, the knockouts championship later on in the show. And like you said, for uh, Madison Rain, I think you said her name was correct. Yes, Madison Rain. Yeah, she like you said. I like looked it up too because I was like, and I heard like the beautiful people, and I'm like, I, I remember that. So like I looked her up then, and, and like she was only 23, I think. Yeah. When this, Very young. you know, yeah. in this match, and like you said, she honed her craft, and that's what you like to see. You don't like to see like when they come in there and they're like, oh, I'm hot, so I'll just get by on my looks, make a couple, you know, a couple thousand dollars, and then be on my way. Like no, she was actually passionate. And got better, and oh, oh, you know, yeah. that's, that's what's well, legit. See, uh, yeah, again, and then like you said, she goes to the beautiful people, and then mm -hmm. she starts with a uh, tagging with Angelina Law, Velvet Sky, and then she went like onto her singles thing. Then she feuded with like Mickey James, she feuded with like ODB later on, and then a uh, Gail Kim. All of mm -hmm. them they were brought into this, and then and then well, now she's married to Josh Matthews. That happens to be the announcer on mm -hmm. Impact until this day. So the match was really legit. Of course, ODB, you know. Legit, mm -hmm. like she's cool, like you know, it's fun. I mean, it she has a fun gimmick, you mm -hmm. know, like I drink, I have you know the, the liquor, whatever. Mm -hmm. look, look, and see, and but and WWE always says, Oh, yeah, we were the first that put women in steel cage. There you go, <laughs> there it is. You know, yeah. there's a match that, like, because he locked down the concept was always like hey, all the matches were contest in steel cage. And see, that's to me when like it's like a gimmick pay per view, every single match need to be inside of yeah. that game. Yeah, and you don't do like hell. Four, yeah, you, yeah, you don't do hell in a cell, and then only two of two out of the eight matches are in the cell because it's like, okay, why couldn't you just have done this at WrestleMania or done this whenever? Why do yeah. why do you need to have a whole pay per view called Hell in a Cell and only two matches are in the cell? Yes, yes, and that's what I mean. Right, but in the end, it was like a really enjoyable match, and ODB wins. And you, mm. of course, out of all of the three of them, ODB was like you try. They were trying to push ODB. To be that kind of woman that end up winning four knockouts championships. So she gets the win. Really legit match. Now let's go to the six sides of Steel's Cage match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. The Motor City Machine Gun, Alex Shelley, NXT, mm -hmm. Kushida, woo! Yeah, yeah. And, and Chris Saban, that they were champions at that time. Chris Saban, actually, Jean Paul, I don't know if you knew this, Impact is doing like recording like a few episodes. Of old school TNA, okay. old school. and Chris Saban was in one of them. He's gonna be like uh, doing some commentary. He's gonna be. I think he might be having a match too. I'll, okay. I'll report that on the page. But like Chris Saban, like he's yeah, kind he, of coming he, back he, into he, the he, world of he wrestling. Was legit, extremely legit. Yeah. LAX, the original LAX, not Santana and Ortiz. No, the Latin American Exchange, Hernandez or Hernandez, and Homicide. And no limit, a guy that like you know a pretty you know a pretty unknown dude called Naito and you hero, and a guy that like has no destino or no destiny, mm -hmm. but like I eventually he found his own destiny mm -hmm. and he became Tetsuya Naito. Yeah, and then the one thing I just want to say, like when I saw him come out, I heard him say Naito, and I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, like yeah, it's Tetsuya Naito, and then. 
as I'm watching his match, I'm like, man, I wish he was this legit now instead of yeah. just 30 Destinos and done. Uh, yeah, I know. When you heard Tetsuya Naito, what did he do? You went like, what? What? Yeah, pretty good. Like, when I saw that, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> it's freaking yeah. Naito. It's freaking Naito. Like, yeah, who would have thought? Legit, who would have thought? And, like, and see, you uh, on those days, TNA, I don't think they had enough of a roster, I will say. Mm. And that's why they had this uh, com this collaboration, this yeah, relationship yeah. with uh, with uh, New Japan. And yeah, that's why they think, had these things it, like this. It, it makes sense because it's like Japan, you know, for a while they weren't doing good. You know, you had like pro wrestling Noah, you had all Japan. They eventually folded and New Japan was kind of struggling because Antonio Inoki was like crazy. He was trying to get into MMA in Japan. And like Japan's wrestling was all just kind of all over the place. And they were like, you know, they're, so they were struggling. So why not make a deal with America? Get eyes on your product. Hey, maybe people watching TNA will be like, oh, these Jap these Japanese guys are legit. Let me, you know, let me watch New Japan. So like, why not? And TNA, as you know, they were good, but they, they weren't competing against WWE. They weren't like trying, they weren't taking, you know, money out of their pockets. So they, it, it would work for both guys. It's like, let's do something to help promote, you know, both of our companies. Yeah, and uh, for, and you know this because I know how much you love Yushin Tanner Liger. He was on TNA a few times. Yeah. He was in a few in Bound for, for Glory, like in like the big events. He was mm -hmm. there, and that was thanks to the to this relationship, to this yeah. cross promotion collaboration that they did. Something very similar, like Ring of Honor and New Japan have nowadays. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, majority of wrestling fans, want that the same kind of deal with AEW and New Japan. We even call it. We even said, how about, uh, we say, like, Asushka Okada going against Jericho for the TNA Championship. Things like that. You no, know? You for the, or for AEW Championship? Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, for example, you you know, like, uh, for example, to see Kota Ibushi going against, let's say, uh, Pac. You mm -hmm. know, like, guys like that. You know, like, uh, or against John Moxley. Things like that, that it will be, like, so beneficial for your product. Seeing oh, yeah. the exposure from these guys. And then, or Tanahashi. Tanahashi mm -hmm. coming and then like I won my championship match. What's going on? Yeah. I mean, I I still want to see him and uh, like him versus uh because he's a big fan of John Cena. Tanahashi, so I want to see that match. That would be a legit match, but there's no way that'll happen. Well, the only way that happening is it isn't in the in the video games. And you know, you know what will happen? Like either you know, faster than that, our truth against going his uh, uh you know childhood idol John yeah. Cena. So, exactly. Yeah. So moving on, well, this match again. See, this is like legit cruiserweights, but I mean high-risk guys. Mm -hmm. They put everything on the line, and then they set the pace for what the cruiserweight division will be after the first reincarnation of the cruiserweight division on WCW. You will see, like, the guys that took over that was these guys. See, like, uh, Kelly, Chris Haven. These guys, like, you know, their team was so high-risk, and it was all mm -hmm. over getting the crowd pumped, and, like, Moon Souls moves from the top rope, uh, the tag team moves combined and all of that, they were able to give you and teach you what will be the future. Like, see, for me, yeah. the first young box is the machine, is the Motor City Machine Guns. Yeah. No, I agree with that 100%, but it's just like, you know, eventually, like, teams like that, the one thing with the young bucks is why people think they're so legit, which they are. Like, they earned everything that they've been given, but they stuck together as a tag team. They weren't like, oh, let's split up and do the singles thing for a few years. No, they were always a team. And that's why people are like, oh, they're the best tag team ever because they, they stuck together. You know, like we said, Alex Shelley, he eventually tagged with Koshida. Chris Saban went on a singles run. You know, he was the TNA champion, I believe, the World yeah. Heavyweight Championship in TNA. So, like, he did have a singles run. But the Young Bucks, you know, they, from my knowledge, they're always stuck together. So that's yeah. what I think helped solidify them. But like in this match, like you said, there was a lot of good stuff. And it was unfortunately the you know, the new Japan guys were kind of like the jobbers in this match. Mm. But like LAX, man, they were the power. And then the Motor City machine guns were like the speed and the finesse because there was a but I forget what the move was, but they like did something almost like a power bomb, but they like slammed Chris Sabin like on the mat, like right on his neck from like the rope. They were like kind of on the cage. And then he, like, brought him down. And it's, like, LAX, like, they had the power and stuff. And Santana and Ortiz are legit and they're good. But, like, when I watch these, I'm like, you know, maybe I'd like to see these guys, too. Like, you know, and see that's a little what more I said. of them, these the original are, LAX. 
these are the legit LAX, and we're not diminishing Santana Ortiz by any means. That's mm -hmm. not what we're trying to say. But like, see, these guys like you can resemble power. Mm -hmm. Like they're so like you know, Hernandez used to be always like you know some muscle like, and Homicide yeah. was almost as as uh, you know as powerful as that. I would say uh, as red red mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, but, because like. Like you said, like, not to cut you off, my apologies, but the one thing, like, he said, they're legit, and you watch them, and then I watch Santana and Ortiz, and he goes, he does the tiger style, and I'm like, bro, like, you get, like, if, if, if I was in the ring and you did the tiger style, I'd kick you in the dick. You know what I mean? I'd be like, like, dude, like, come on. Like, what even is that? And like, then that's what I mean. Scr he scratches your back and then does the tiger style, and I'm like, what are you in the Wu-Tang Clan tiger style? Like, get out of here, dude. Because he's black mass, he's like Eddie. Not even Eddie yeah. being black mass will do a move like that. Yeah. But in the end, after a really good match, 11 minutes and 49 seconds, the Motor City Machine Guns, Shelly once again, and not Kushida, Chris Haven, they retain the championships. I will say that's probably, you know, the, one of the best cruiserweight yeah. tag teams of all time. Oh, yeah, I, and I, I love their finisher. It's, it's almost like a sit-out powerbomb, like a slice bread into a sit-out powerbomb. I think they, it was called the Motor City Miracle. Legit yes. finisher. And yeah, the name, finisher. Motor City yep. Miracle. Like, yep. so legit. So legit. And see, like, again, those kind of things get you pumped up about wrestling. Mm -hmm. They light a fire in you. And they light a fire in your butthole. And then yeah. you want to keep watching yeah. and being... Yeah. Be, be and, and that's the thing, like too. Like, as soon as they won, they showed the crowd. There's how many, like... You know, Motor City, like MGM signs, all like a bunch, not like one, not like there's one mark in the crowd. He's like, yay, Motor City Machine Guns. No, so many people. And it's like, you don't see that in WWE. Did we see that at, at the Elimination Chamber? Was there signs, Heavy Machinery or New Day or Usos? No. No, not even yeah. Metro Golden Mayor, not even AGM. You everybody know, not, was, yeah. no, everybody not, was on their phone. Everyone was on their phone running up and down. People don't care nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or like remember doing yeah, the running cardio, up. yeah cardio back and forth yeah we'll keep we'll keep you know putting that like we'll keep like touching the wound right, right there so next match Jean Paul something that a guy that like is now in WWE he became a producer and that is a uh, Aviz going against Matt Morgan the monster the second, versus the blueprint yeah the blueprint Matt Morgan a guy that like had the you know I will say the characteristics the look of what Brock Lesnar was. Mm. Did he ever become as good as Brock Lesnar? Hell no. Unfortunately, he had the ability, but I don't know what happened. That never came to fruition. He mm. never was able to consolidate himself as yeah. a main event guy. And to and me, they got this great match. Go yeah, ahead. this this match, like now you say, it was a great match. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll that back a little bit. This match, it was good. You know, m my boy came in at the end, which we'll get to it. Um, but beforehand they did like a little interview thing and it's like, Oh, Dr. Stevie. And the first thing I thought, I'm like, Stevie, I'm like, they, you know, I always just think Stevie Richards and I'm like, ah, okay, you know, whatever. But like Abyss, he was like, Oh, you know, I'm not supposed to use, as we call them, the toys. I'm not supposed to, you know, use chairs, weapons, all this stuff. I'm told not to do that anymore. So, and in this match, but like Abyss, he needs a guy like a Sabu. I know he had great matches with Sabu, AJ Styles, guys like that are smaller faster can carry him not that abyss was bad abyss was good for his gimmick his character and everything but when you have two big hulking guys in there it's not going to be a you know it's not going to be a five-star classic it's not going to be a it, this match is like a two and a half star match at best but like it's more just like you know everything like just abyss's character to me which was really cool because like and of course you need yeah. the toys though you need all the things so you mm -hmm. can actually do something because yeah, yeah like Morgan was never, like, that that legit in the ring. No, like, what does he have? Like, the big boot, you know, like, the bro kick, we kind of said. And it was like, yeah, he has the look, but that's it. All he had, really, in my eyes, was the look. Yeah. Yeah, and I, but to see, they all, that's why I think they noticed it, you know, the lack of, a, I will say, the lack of, a bar. I will say, Arsenal in Matt Morgan. I will mm -hmm. say the lack of, like, movesets and stuff. So that's why they made this match. They call it the Doomsday Chamber of Blood. Yeah. And that was kind of the specialty of a of a this. That was kind of like he will go in like like really like high yeah. race like dead yeah. match. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. like the barbed matches. wire match. Like I said, he had so many barbed wire matches with like Sabu and all those like crazy you know matches like that. Like super legit. Like I said, Abyss. I really like. I'm a big fan of his. It to me when I first saw Abyss like back in the day before I even really like 
knew like as much about wrestling as I do now. I always knew who like Mankind was. And I'm like, this guy, he just stole Mankind's gimmick. It's very similar, yeah, yeah because of the mask me, and everything. It, it reminds me he's like Kane. If like Kane and Mankind, which they were a tag team, if the two of them had a baby, you know, somehow like you took their DNA, made it like cloned a baby, it would be a best. And, and you know who did it? It was Mae Young who delivered the kid. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And not the hand. No. The, yeah. The hand can go away, but it's, you know, it's a bit. So he's legit. And I do like the way they did this match. I wish WWE, which now WWE, they don't do color. They don't do blood a lot in their matches. But this is how a first blood match should be where the guy bleeds, then you can pin him. Yeah. Because, like, like of course, you you're weak. Until you're, weak yeah. you're weakened, right? The blood, you lost a lot of blood, so you're going to be weaker. After yeah, that. because Abyss got busted open within the first two minutes of this match, and if that was in WWE, ding, 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 winner Matt Morgan, it would have been like, really? Or the doctor goes and cleans the blood, you know, for yeah. old school fans like us. I don't feel that, like, does any justice, because blood, you need color. Like, mm -hmm. it's a combat sport. It's a contact it's, sport. To me, like, but again, like we always say, we're, we're not morons. We're not stupid. We know that this is a predetermined, you know, it's a staged performance, you could say. And, like, we know that. But if you put blood in and all this stuff for a split second, you forget that. And you're like, oh, man, like this is like, like, oh, it's, it's like it's real. It's legit. And and not, you know, again, like we, we know it's not real. But when you add the things of realism, it makes it so much more legit. Well, it it's, it's, it means how do you feel? OK, even using that, or how do you feel if like Batman or Superman or anything, they never bleed? Yeah. You know, exactly. it's like, oh, so like, uh, isn't so you're making the guy completely like untouchable. You're mm -hmm. making and blood humanizes people. Yep. That's what it is. You're humanizing the human, the, the person. And even in that part in the match that like Abyss grabs, like I think it's like a, a piece of, uh, or like I want to say like a blade or something. And he goes to Morgan and, and then you see the whole thing. Like he's completely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have the, yeah, they have the shards of glass. Cause I know Morgan. The glass, there you go. It was glass. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, he, which. Obviously, it's probably like fake gimmick glass. There's no way that they're because he was squeezing this thing of glass like he was holding it in his hand like this. You don't hold the shard he of glass. Been, he would be He'll bleeding. Be if that would be, yeah. Yeah. Man. So, but like, yeah. So he busted open Abyss with that chair early on, and then uh, Abyss got him. He was bleeding him open, and I do like that visual where I think it was Abyss had Morgan. He was gonna like slam his head into the shards of glass. That was on the ring, and he's just dripping the blood like onto the glass, and it was just like a really cool visual and stuff. And like you said, you know, then this match, it was like, oh, okay, Abyss, you know, he's gonna win. This is gonna be legit. He goes out, he opens the because they were in the cage, but you could still go out. It wasn't one of those things where oh, you escape the cage, you win. He goes out. He's like, let me get a chair. I'm gonna you know crush this fool. Who comes out? Stevie. Stevie. Doctor Stevie. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie from Right to Censor. From no, right to censor. No bullshit. Raven's lackey. Right to censor never existed. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. Yeah, he comes in and and then he helps out. Uh, he ends up helping out Matt, uh, Matt Morgan. Yeah, because he, uh, you know, he's like, no, don't do this. Remember what we said? And he's like, dude, like, screw you, dude. So he goes in there, and Stevie takes off his jacket. I I was hoping we would have saw Stevie kick. I was I was ready to pop. That would have been my biggest pop of the night, besides the main event. But no, he just takes off his jacket and he starts slapping him. Like, no, stop, stop. And then, you know, Matt Morgan takes advantage and, you know, slams him onto the pile of thumbtacks and done. But legit, though, you know. But it, was, it was legit because, like like I said, obviously, we you know, we could go back in the archives and tune in next week to find out, you know, the fallout of this. But that's what I like. At least it kept the story because it's like now, you know, Abyss is going after Stevie Richards. Yeah. Like it wasn't just like oh Abyss lost clean and he looks like a loser and done. No, and like there's story and everything. It continues it on. It keeps it going. And you know, in, with people like this, like you always could continue the stories going on. See, Abyss was like he that he had a really great career on mm -hmm. TNA. He became one of them. He went to WWE as a producer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he had there so now. So many opportunities to go back as a wrestler. Even the closest one being WrestleMania, uh, 2011. And then 2011, WrestleMania 27, they were this close to make a deal also. So he could start a rivalry with, with The Undertaker. But for some reason, it, like, the negotiations stopped. But, like, he went as a producer, like I said. He never wrestled for WWE, which is cool. You see the loyalty in guys. Isn't yeah. We love The Undertaker for remaining loyal to the WWE. But, mm -hmm. hey, 
I mean, we gotta love the loyalty that he has for TNA. Yeah. And I, I wish, and, and I do like that, and I wish, you know, going on to the loyalty thing, I wish Sting would have never came to WWE. I wish he would have only came for a WrestleMania match against The Undertaker, and that's it. He has no matches beforehand. You just do build, boom, he wrestles the match, whether he, it would have been at WrestleMania, so, you know, maybe he would have lost if The Undertaker's streak would have still been alive. He loses and done. Never see him again. To me, that would have been cool because then it would have just been a thing where it's like, yeah, I don't go here. Like, you know, I don't wrestle here, but I'm going to show up. I'm going to do this match because it's not about promotions. It's about, you know, the icon versus the phenom. No, oh, yeah. It will but, be. Like, that's what I'm, that's, I like when people, they're like, I'm not going to go to WWE because look how they used Sting. Bullshit. How would they have used the Abyss? Bullshit. He would have yeah. showed up and he would have lost. So what's Main the event. Point? Main yeah. event in, in, in two weeks. Fighting against Jinder Mahal or something like mm -hmm. that. So, Mr. Egg, absolutely right with your point. Women's, uh, the knockouts championship. See, no, we're not going to say, mm -hmm. you know, that's how the, the division was called, the knockouts. Angelina Love with Velvet Sky. Like I said, beautiful people. Going against Awesome Kong. She was the champion. Awesome Kong right now. Stop being an active wrestler for AEW. She transitioned, and she's going to be another producer. Another mm -hmm. part of, like, she's going to create a storyline. She's going to help out in the backstage role. Yeah, because, which, I guess, he has a lot of injuries. It which I sense. think is the, right, is the right choice, like you said. Because watching this match, if this is how Awesome Kong would have wrestled when she debuted on AEW, I'd be like, let her wrestle. You know, barring injuries, let her wrestle. But to see what she was doing in current day, no. Like, that's and not something you want to present all the injuries, on. like, her career... She got pregnant, and then when she was when she debuted in WWE, right, got pregnant right away. And then I think she got pregnant again. She was a far like she got a lot of like, personal situations, like. And I'm not saying getting pregnant is bad. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. like it was the wrong time because like I guess they were starting to push her, and then that never came to fruition after she came back. So like it was, she was never able to regain the type of like push or the time of like I will say like the like the legitimacy that she had mm -hmm. right now at this point in 09. Yeah. So she's the champion. She goes also to against Raisha Seed, and she's uh, accompanied by Taylor White. Taylor White used to be so legit. She never became big, but I was I was a fan of hers. Like, and she reminds me a little bit of Alexa Bliss. So the ones that like you know love the goddess, that's why you know Jean Paul is hating, but it's fine. You know we can agree to disagree. No, I, I mean I would say she's about as good as Alexa Bliss, maybe a little better. I will say a little better. Give me yeah. credit here. At least you yeah. fought in the steel cage. Yeah. And they're going for the, like I said, the knockouts championship. The match, of course, the women, at least they put a little bit of a condition show, I will say. And see yeah. Awesome Kong, like I said, dominant. And you mm -hmm. see the Awesome Kong that could yeah. actually wrestle. Legit wrestle. Yeah. And she, uh, I forget who it was. I think it was Wild. She had her knocked down and she was on the ropes. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I'm thinking she's just going to do some kind of Vader bomb, you know, bullshit. Like, hey, I'm big. Let me just drop my, you know, my weight on you. She does a freaking moonsault. Yeah. Off the ropes, and I'm like, oh my god, like it better than Charlotte. Because if Wild wouldn't have rolled, because she rolled then between like the ring and like the cage, so she was like right against the cage wall. Like, if she didn't roll out of the way, Awesome Kong would have hit that thing perfect. And like the commentary said, she would have killed her. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, if the Awesome Kong could do stuff like that, it would be legit. But you know, it was a decent showing, you know, for the other two women, Awesome Kong definitely dominant, and they did the smart thing. Um. Like you said, uh, who was the woman on the outside? Not with Awesome Kong, the other one. Uh, the other one, I think, is uh, Raisha Seat. Yeah. I oh, no. No, not or with Awesome Kong. Or Velvet Sky, I think you're Yeah, saying. Velvet Sky. Yeah, where she tied Awesome Kong's braids. Yeah, that was Velvet yeah. Sky, yes. Yeah, because you see, like, the, the beginnings of the beautiful people. So mm -hmm. she tied her up, and then and then she couldn't move, and then the match went on with a smaller woman, so mm -hmm. to say. And that's where Angelina Love takes advantage, and then she ends up winning, and then she becomes a new knockouts champion. So it was a it was a legit match. Yeah, see, like, and I think and I think the beautiful people they were the ones because earlier they were saying like they were cut they cut Awesome Kong's braids. She had like the her like hair was in braids, but then she also had like blonde braids in the front. They were cutting them, which was kind of like what Awesome Kong was doing when she came to uh, AEW. Was cutting the hair. So Thank then you. Um, Nightmare like, Collective. Yeah, yeah, Nightmare Collective, Hair Collective. You know, but like it was cool because then it's like okay, you know they. They cut her hair. They were pissing her off. And then they tied her up here. And then they won. So it's like it just continues the feud. And that's a, a good thing I like to see when there's the storytelling in that. It's like, yeah, it's not over. Not like, I, again, you know, I always compare to WWE. They, like, don't care for stories. Yeah. Like, 
like we said with the you know to go back to recent and the uh, something similar the illumination chamber what where's the story with Ziggler and and heavy machinery done yeah like it's it's kind of there but it's like it's barely there <laughs> and we don't even know it's going to turn into a match yeah. at WrestleMania and for the ones we already like that follow us in the social media world we already confirm breaking news well not that breaking news but confirm WWE will be taping WrestleMania the day two uh, Wednesday and Thursday of this upcoming week they will be taping this because there is not really security of if they're going to be able to record or like have the show on the days that like they're supposed to air because of the situation when with, with the current you know with the virus and everything they don't know if they're going to let it do it or or stop them from doing it so they're going to take the, you know the easy route I, I wouldn't say easy let me re rephrase myself they're going to just try to prevent themselves from not having that many issues yeah so, i example, mean yeah I, I would rather have them just postpone it because as soon as i see spoilers like i said if I see spoilers, there's going to be half the card I won't even want to watch. Yeah, and like for example, if I see like, spoilers, I'm like, okay, I don't care, I don't care. If they, especially for example, like you know, you're gonna have two days, so you're gonna know, like, uh, or like you don't even want to watch in, in either day because you already yeah. know what's gonna happen. So yeah. it's gonna be, a, it, it's it's been a rough year for everybody. The whole world is suffering, but that's why we're trying to give you positivity and entertainment. And moving along with entertainment. Rocky Balboa, Philadelphia Street Fight match for the Tag Team Championships, the IWGP Championships, and the TNA, and the TNA World Tag Team Championship, a tag team that I've been pushing for WWE to bring back because I love Dolph, but he does not fit with Bobby Roode, and, and Glorious is not Glorious anymore. I'd rather him go back to this version of Bobby Roode, and that's... Blood is thicker than beer and right Yep, yeah, so beer money, beer money going against Team 3D or like WWE, the Dudley Boys, mm -hmm. kind of crappy that like they couldn't even use the name Dudley Boys because WWE, of course, trademarked that. Yeah, and they couldn't use their own but, name. But they, they they changed the whole gimmick. So like to, like I agree, like the Dudley Boys to me are nostalgic in that sense. But Team 3D is cool because it, not that they weren't legit in WWE. But this is more going like their ECW like cranked up to like 11 where it's like they're brutal. You know, they went all over the world. Like they said, after, you know, spoiler, you know, 11, 11 year, 11 year, you know, spoiler, they win this match. So then they I think that's their 23rd. I think he said 23rd tag team championship. Yeah. So like they are like one of the most legit tag teams in the history of the business. One one. Yeah, go finish the thought, and, and, and I'll give you some uh, piece of information right there. And they said that they were the second American tag team, or the, yeah, the second American tag team to win the IWGP Tag Team Championships in the last fifteen years. At that point, you know, now some people might have done it before, but they showed like um, I, it was Vader, and I don't remember who it was. Vader, and I don't, it might maybe Mick Foley or Stan Hansen or somebody. It was. It had to be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, they showed it. Was, Vader was one of them. Um, and that's what I mean. So, like, you know, to go over there, like they said in Japan, it's different than over here. You gotta, like, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm cool, like whatever. I, I'm just gonna win everything, or like the boss loves me, you know, like a Brock Lesnar nowadays. Like he's just gonna win, 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 win. Like you know, you have to have the fighting spirit. You have to be legit, and that's what they have. So, like, and again, going into this thing, it was like, who was gonna win? You know, we wanted beer money, but this match was legit otherwise. So, oh yeah, even and though. I yeah, like you said, the piece of information, like, the Dudley Boys, is the most decorated team in professional history. Mm -hmm. Professional wrestling history, the most decorated. They won every single title in every single major promotion. Yeah, every so, place they went, they were, they had gold. Ring of Honor, you know, uh, right now, TNA, I, you know, uh, New Japan, and uh, WWE, 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 ECW, yep. Yeah. ECW, all of them, and if they will be on AEW, they probably will win those titles again because yeah. Baba Ray and Neva are legit. Yeah. And I'm not and saying that's... To me, they're not my favorite tag team, yeah. but it's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, and they, I do like you know how they said they're gimmick. They don't come out, you know, the brother Devon, brother Ray, you know, testify all that stuff. Like it just it fits. It's like you know, we're, like you better testify because we're gonna send your ass to hell if you don't. And that's you know, legit, and, you legit. Know, match like all toys. Tables, you know, of course, get the tables that reference. They did all of that. James Storm and Bobby Root, legit tag team. Mm -hmm. They put on a great show. And in the end, 
James Storm is kind of messes it up. Yeah, you well, I, I, yeah, yeah, to go through some of the spots, like I do like when they're brawling in the crowd and all that. And see, that's the thing. Like, I feel like if they, if WWE, they did a brawl through the crowd, the fans would just be like, so. But the crowd, they're going crazy. They're like touching the guy, you know, like, oh yeah, like going all like insane. And he drops um Bobby Roode on the on the guardrail, crotches him and stuff. And then I do love when they do that spot. They have the table set up and they do the beer money suplex on Devon through the table. And he, I love when Devon sells shit and he's got like his leg going like crazy. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, just you know, awesome stuff. But like you said, James Storm kind of. He kind of screws it over for Bobby and Bobby Roode. You know, even back then, he had a beautiful spine buster. I forget if it was on Bubba or Devon, but you know, he had a beautiful spine buster. You know, legit stuff. And then, then of course, like I said, like James Storms ends up hitting Bobby with the with the door, mm -hmm. and then Bobby gets all like, you know, he's groggy, and then he falls into a three D. Yeah, three D through. Well, I think it was through, through, through a table, table, wasn't it? Through the table yep, and yep. done. And and done. So they become, you know, they do dual champions. They have both championships, legit match. And now we're gonna go to like kind of like one of them to the two main events. We're gonna go mm -hmm. to Team Jeff Jarrett, AJ Styles, um, SEU Christopher Daniels, the fake exalted one, and uh, Jeff Jarrett and Samoa Joe going against the Team Angle that later on will become the main event Mafia, and that's Booker T. And then it's Kevin Nash, Kurt Angle, and. Big Papa Pom, Scott Steiner. Yep, we know the boys are recovering. So yep. good for you, Big Papa Pom. We hear you whenever you holler. Yep. So legit is and a lethal lockdown match. Extremely, extremely good stuff. Yeah, this is kind of similar to like a War Games, you could say, because some you know people do have the advantage. They said you know Team Angle, Main Event Mafia, whatever you want to call them, they had the advantage. And like just going through this thing, like you know. As I'm watching it, I'm like, okay, the last two guys that come out are going to be big, sexy Kevin Nash because, you know, no offense, but he's bullshit. He and was already done. He was yeah, already he's done. already done. And Jeff Jarrett because, Jeff, you know, Jeff Jarrett's the boss. Why would he need to go out there and wrestle, you know, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes? Hell no. Let Kurt Angle and, you know, Christopher AJ. Daniels and AJ Styles do that, you know. Why does he need to do that? Double so, J. But, like, it was a legit match. Like, I love... As much as I love, you know, 2006, Kurt Angle, you know, all that stuff. Like, you know, Kurt Angle was great WWE, but I agree 100, 200, 1,000 percent with what he says. His best work is in TNA by far. Everything oh, yeah. Kurt Angle does, I mean, he's just so much, so more legit. And just, you know, it's great. I love seeing AJ Styles, you know, young AJ Styles, excuse me. It's like, why couldn't, you know, he have been in WWE? Like, imagine if he was in WWE. He, he would be like John Cena. He'd be like a 14-time champion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, unless, unless, unless Vince McMahon, but see, but I say that, but then I could see Vince McMahon going, how tall are you? Oh, okay. Be the the ice. That's, yeah, a, that's right. a pretty great observation because also at that time, we got a thing also that, you know, Triple AJ Styles going to WWE has a lot to do with Triple H. And at mm -hmm. that time, Triple H was, didn't have the same power that he has now. Yeah. So it would have been, oh, you're and, here? And he probably also didn't have the same mindset. Back then, Triple H was probably still stroking his own sledgehammer, you know, his yeah. own ego. And he was like, I'm legit. I'm the best. I'm like 6'3", 200 whatever pounds. Like, I'm I'm badass. And it's like, who? Like, AJ Styles? What are you, 5'10"? AJ who? Yeah. AJ who? Yeah. yeah. The only AJ I care about is AJ Lee. You know what I mean? Like, get out of here, dude. Like, we don't, like, you know. So I don't think that like, he would have, you know, been good for him to go there. And I believe I heard an interview he did have a tryout there and they were like so yeah he did he did have a, like a future in 97 98 he had a dark match but like mm -hmm. he, they were not impressed with him but there you go but see aj styles the, the story has a happy ending he goes to wwe and now he's the phenomenal one yeah. and even and even booker t you know in this match too to kind of like flip back to the match booker t's now he was kind of in the middle of the road he i wouldn't put him in the grave with like a kevin nash and I would put him ahead of Scott Steiner, but he wasn't at the level of like a Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels. Oh, no. And all. He but was he was already in the, in the, in the yeah. decline of his yeah. career. But it's still legit, you know, mm -hmm. still good. Uh, I love how Samoa Joe had the whole like Samoan, like the, I yeah, want to say design, tattoo. Like tattoo. Yeah, yeah, on his face. Yeah. And, and really, you just really see, good. and again, Samoa Joe, it don't matter what his weight is, he can still do everything he needs to do. And he looks legit with that slimmed down Samoa Joe, the younger, you know, 
like he looked way more intimidating, more legit. Oh yeah, and Christopher Daniels, like you know he's so good, and it's a shame like we see him in AEW, and he's like probably like where Booker T and Scott Steiner was at that time. He he's not done, but the decline is definitely. In but motion. you see, yeah, you see the light of the you see the 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 end is near. Yeah. You see that, yes, and uh, I really love the spot when Papa Pum does the Huracarana. Yeah, he does the, the Frankensteiner. The yeah, Frankensteiner, the... you know, they call it Frank yeah. freaking Frankensteiner because of him, but like to me, Huracarana, like, mm. but legit, legit move and everything, and then of course, Jeff Jarrett comes out, and uh, they were able to um, yeah. and defeat the team angle. They yeah, were able to defeat him. Angle, like, they're, everybody's brawling and shit, Angle's like, you know, he starts climbing up. And they say, like, oh, he moved some of the, the railing out of the way or whatever. It was probably already a hole there, you know, whatever. He crawls through, so he's on top of the cage. And as soon as he gets up there, immediately, who meets him? AJ yeah, there Styles. it is. So yeah. he comes up, they start brawling, and they almost, like, suplex each other off the cage, all this craziness. And then Angle's back down in there. Styles is still up top. He jumps down onto everybody, and I think he hit his hand. It, I almost thought he hit his face, and then they showed the replay. He hit his hand on, like, the cage as he was falling down. And, I mean, that thing, had that had to hurt bad. He probably messed up his hand. But, like, he takes everybody out, legit spots. You know, guys are trying to pin each other. Everybody's breaking it up. But then, you know, Jeff Jarrett, eventually everybody's in. They, like I said, you know, they close the thing. They get the toys. He has his guitar, and it's like... Is he going to whack Styles? You know, what is he going to do? That's the story there. You know, who's he going to turn on? And like we said, you know, he he uh, he doesn't. He's you know stays loyal to his team, and they get the win. But then who comes out? Um, a guy that actually is married now, married to yeah. Lana, yep. and a guy that like, the like yeah, uh, the the Almighty, <laughs> the Almighty Bobby Lashley. He yep. comes out. And he's like, ah, like he's legit at that time. Hey, yeah. And like, Ang laughing his ass off, and he's like, "Yep, yep, this is my boy right here." And he's like, "Look at this, yeah, like look yeah. at this guy, <laughs> look at this." Yeah, he that was his debut. I mean, he was released by WWE at that time. He was trying the MMA career. He got like two matches, I, I believe. He was like two and zero, oh, but like I, I guess he couldn't make it to the big league, so to say, or like in a, a championship match. And that's why he went to TNA, and everybody was like, "Oh my gosh, the next best thing!" Kind mm -hmm. of like a, the Brock Lesnar of like our the our company is going to be yeah. Bobby Lashley. He ended up becoming the world heavyweight champion and everything. But I will say at least he became a better wrestler in TNA. But yeah. of course, he goes to WWE one day and done. Mm -hmm. Main event, Mister Egg, Cactus Jack. Na 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 Going against another one of your boys, the Stinger. Yep. The wedding, the wedding Stinger. Yeah. For the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, legit match. And, and look at the, Cole, and, even at that time, he was still pulled good stuff. Yeah, and look at the story. There was a long-term story. You know, Sting was in the main event mafia. He leaves. You know, stuff's going on, and then he talks about like, you know, mix it like, hey, you know, Sting, you were one of those guys who made me in WCW. You're one of the guys who helped put me on the map. You know, I don't know where my career would be without you. And then Sting's like, yeah, you know, blah blah blah, like your career's done. And he's like, but he he didn't say it in like a mean way. And he's like, he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm the only one who says when well, my career's over. He's like, I'm still a wrestler. He's like, and you know, every once in a while, us wrestlers like to wrestle. So, you know, Mick, he was like, I still got one or two left in the tank. You know, don't be talking shit on me. But then he couldn't be, he couldn't be Mick. You know, he couldn't be, was he the commissioner at that time or general manager or what was he? No, ne neither one. I, oh, I think he was, was just, no, no, okay. yeah, nothing, nothing. He was still okay. just a wrestler. Okay. Cause he was like, you know, he was talking and all this stuff, but he's like, I can't be Mick Foley. You know, I got to go back to Cactus Jack, you know, where it all began. And, like, this, to me, it was, like, legit just for the sense of, like, the long-term, you know, storytelling in this match. It wasn't something like they booked a month before this pay-per-view and were like, yeah, so... Like, this was, like, a long time. And, you know, it was a good match for what these two guys could do. Like, I was excited for, you know, especially the ending. The yeah. same way, like, they Because they even said, like, oh, you know, Mick Foley, Cactus Jack, a three-time world champion. And I'm like, yeah, and his three title reigns were bullshit. Well, I mean... Yeah, but at in, least in, he made it to the yeah. top. I mean, in, for me, it's like at least he was champion yeah. because 
other people, you know, they didn't even have a championship. Yeah, for they were me, never I, just, I just don't like the length of his title reigns because, like, everything that guy put his body through and how tough he was, it was like, you're telling me he couldn't have a title reign for, like, five months? You couldn't give him, like, a legit title reign? Oh, well, yeah. You know what if, I mean? If like, anything, for me, he should have won at Hell in a Cell with Triple H. He should have yeah. won. That's what he should have won. But, you know, uh, you know, decisions. But mm -hmm. in the end, like, the match was legit. And, yeah, like, walk us through the end. More like, I mean, everything. He, he didn't want the barbed wire, in, uh, like Barbie, you could say. He didn't want her. And he was like, I want this cage locked. He's like, I don't want us escaping this cage. We're going to do battle like men in this cage. Eventually, Stinger got the upper hand. And then he goes to open the cage. And he's like, yeah. no, I want to get out of here. And it's like, Mick, you were the one who said, let's lock it. Nobody's getting out. And I didn't know exactly what happened, but I, I don't know if the camera, I think they had like holes cut in the cage. Yeah. And the camera meant so they could record. So it's not like WWE where you just see the freaking grating from the cage and you can't actually see what's going on. So they're recording this. He drop kicks the dude. And then he like the cameraman. And then later on, that cameraman, when he gets up, he's like, give me the bat. Give me the bat. And he's like, okay. And he <laughs> hands Mick the bat, but he hands it to him like barbed wire thing first. So Mick yeah. had to grab the barbed wire, pulls this in here, because he was in the Scorpion death lock, which, like we said, you know, both, you know, him and Bret Hart, you know, I love Sting, I love Bret Hart, but man, if if you're comparing Sharpshooter to Scorpion death lock, Sharpshooter, no baby. Sharpshooter Watch is... that video. Thank you for all the good and bad reception of, of that video. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Keep but, it. like, you know, it was legit. He gets out of it. And then eventually, towards the end of the thing, they're climbing the cage. And you see, like, Mickey's on top and Sting's there. And then Mick's slowly making his way down. And then Sting's up at the top and he starts to climb over. And then Mick's like, you know what? Screw it. He lets go, falls, and done. And, and the bell wins. rings and he's the champ. And I was, I popped because I didn't know. Like I said, I really don't know much about TNA. I know a little bit. I saw some Kurt Angle, some Moa Joe matches. AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, Kurt Angle. You know, I've watched matches here and there, but I never follow, like, the storyline. The whole story, so yeah. I, yeah, so I didn't know that Mick won, so I popped. I'm like, legit, I was like, yeah. I'm like, it this is a, badass. It was a like, yeah, and he yeah, deserves he, it, and he deserves, he deserves it. it. You know? And that made his career even better to me because he was able to be the man in both companies because at that time, both of them were the dominant companies in America. Mm -hmm. So... A beautiful pay-per-view. We had a lot of fun watching it. We just did it because of you. Road break sometimes can go classic or retro road break. Mm -hmm. So we just did it. Yeah, like we said, it was it. something. It was like, hey, you know, we were talking. It's like, oh, you know, like I said, we we both like TNA just because, you know, they, they do put on some good matches, some fun matches. Yeah, some are a little, you know, some are a little bogus. Some are a little like, really, like this is like awful. But most of the time back then, it was like legit stuff. It was just... It was so forgotten because of the juggernaut WWE was. Yes. No, a lot of people weren't paying attention. So it was like, you know, they were going under the radar. So you go back, you watch this stuff. Like I said, it wasn't no Wrestle Kingdom 14. It wasn't like, you know, the greatest show on earth. It wasn't nothing like that. But you watch this and it's like, this was a lot of fun. It was cool. And I'm down to do like a Bound for Glory or do something else because I had a lot of fun watching this. It was only three hours, the length of a Raw. You know, if you can watch Monday Night Raw, you can watch this. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, it was a lot of fun. Exactly. So, guys, if you guys need us to do a like a um, in any pay per view, let us know. Put it in the, please, in the comments please, below. Please suggest something good. Don't suggest like Halloween Havoc with Hulk Hogan when he has to run through all those losers. Please suggest something good. Well, I mean, uh, well, you know, it's like uh, everybody unless, like, unless unless if you suggest something bad and you want to see a shoot on it. Then, then, yeah, then well, go ahead. I, I, I will say, you know, like, like the colors for tastes or tastes for colors. You know, everybody has their, their own opinion. So I will say, hey, give us whatever. And we'll, like, if we have that many options, we'll put it in our, you know, we'll uh, raffle. And then we'll mm -hmm. just, like, shuffle it. And then whatever comes, what comes. And we'll do the review on that. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, I had a great time watching this. You know, TNA, at least uh, on those days, they were able to put something legit. And the fruit of that is like a lot of the guys that we see in WWE now, that's where they started. That's where they, we saw them. So it's a great stop to see. And, Big and, uh, as champion, I'm and, always going to enjoy that. Oh, me that's too. That's what I said. I, that was a, the biggest pop of the whole night for me for was watching this was, you know, see Foley win. And to go on what you said, I believe Drew McIntyre was a 
TNA yes, champion. Sir. Drew Galloway. So let's let me. Yeah, so there's a there's a lot of guys who came if through there. If you want, we can do that. It was you know, Bound for Glory. I'm pretty sure it has to be around 2011, 2012. Around okay. those, it's like where a, a guy that like is still employed by WWE. I don't know if he's in catering. I don't know if he's like painting walls. I don't know if he's locked in the performance center. He's taking the trash, and he's a good guy. Like he gave me the flu. I will say mm -hmm. that easy three. They had a really great rivalry, even with Mark Hardy. But uh, we can do that too. But like mm -hmm. family, comment, let us know. Hey, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to do Triple A, Triple Mania. You put it there. We will shuffle it, and then we'll reveal in front of you Anything, in one of the shows. Lucha Underground, whatever. If we can find it to watch it, you know, we'll do it. We enjoy that because Road Break, during the crisis, we go retro. Mm -hmm. So, in the name of Jean-Paul and myself, thank you so very much for watching the videos. Please help us out subscribing. Turn on the bell for all the notifications. As you guys see, we have a lot of content. We have this video. We have something different in the works. Jean-Paul is already, like, he's uh, kind of cooking it. He has to go and open mm -hmm. it up to see if he's ready. The three hours, so he's going to unplug the thing. So he's already cooking right there. And we have also, like, soccer that I put in the morning. We have some gameplay from WrestleMania for the guys that like to watch, like, Retromania and also, like, new matches. So for all of you that enjoy that on WWE 2K19, because 20, we will not play that. So, you know, don't forget to check us out in the social media world, right, Jean-Paul? New Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us all on there for the updates as soon as we see them. And YouTube is the place where you sit back, relax. Like I said, you get your beer money and you watch us, you know, review some legit shit. You get Bobby Roode and, and yep. James Storm. That's right. And NWA and also like WWE right now. Get them back. Either one of you have two promotions. Get the beer money back. I keep I keep loving for that. So in the name of Jean Paul and myself, stay healthy. Because we're going to still be in prison as inmates. So give me like the harmonica and I'm going to start playing for you. And in Jump Paul Egg, my name. One, I want to say to all of you. Uh, 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 uh,